My last Minecraft mod video is somehow already pretty updated, and since 1.20 just dropped, I think it's time to show you my updated list of the best performance and quality of life mods for Minecraft. I'm going to show you how to install Quilt, which is the mod loader that I'm going to use to actually make the mods run. And before you ask, yes, you can use Fabric instead of Quilt for most, if not all, of these mods. Currently, there are a very small number of mods that are Quilt exclusive right now, so you're probably fine with using Fabric if you really want to, or if something is wrong with Quilt. Let's get started installing it. Start up the vanilla Minecraft version for the Quilt version you're about to install, which is in my case 1.19.4, and then once the game starts, close it. Make sure you have Java installed, and then click this link in the description, click install, click client, click universal jar, run it, select the version, and install it. Open up your .minecraft folder, however you do that, make a folder called something memorable, make a folder called mods, and put the mods into that folder. I've linked a big list of every mod that's featured in this video in the description, so once you're done watching, you can choose which mods you'd like to use. Head back to the main Minecraft directory, or whatever directory you've been using and copy over your options.txt file to the folder you just made. You might also want to move over your worlds, resource packs, and shaders that you want to use because they won't show up if you start Minecraft with this modded instance unless you move them to that folder. You may be wondering why we need to put everything into this folder and that's for a couple of reasons. If you put everything into a separate folder, your keybinds will stop breaking every time you switch versions. Also, there's no risk of accidentally loading one of your worlds in an old version because the new worlds will only show up in this new version. Now, open up the Minecraft launcher and click on the brand new Quilt instance that just appeared. Click the Browse button next to Game Directory and select the folder that you just made. Also, if you have 16 gigabytes of RAM or more, I'd recommend clicking the More Options button and changing this number in the JVM arguments to a 3. This will allocate more memory to the game and hopefully help with lag spikes when you're generating a lot of terrain. Just a little recommendation, since new worlds in Minecraft 1.18 and above are pretty intensive. Okay, we have Quilt. Now it's time for mods. If you haven't heard of Sodium by now, I'd love to know what rock you've been living under for the last two and a half years. Historically, Optifine has been the grand master of performance mods for Minecraft, but on the vast majority of computers nowadays, Sodium's going to give you the highest possible frame rate. If you're interested to see if Optifine may be better for you, consider checking out the Optifine vs. Sodium comparison video that I made a while ago. Generally, anybody with a dedicated graphics card will benefit the most from using Sodium, and it definitely shows for me. Even if you don't generally have frame rate problems, you should absolutely still use this mod because it'll allow you to get the same performance with even higher video settings. If Optifine ends up being a better choice for your computer, just remember that it's incompatible with many of the mods I'll be talking about in this video. You're completely on your own if you use Optifine, I'm sorry, that's just kind of how this video is structured. Anyway, back on topic. I'd also recommend adding the Lithium mod. Lithium makes the performance of the in-game server better. Even in single player, you're still running a local server on your computer, so this mod will fix issues with server lag, like freezing mobs and low TPS. If you don't know what TPS is, congrats, you're not a nerd, look it up. The Starlight mod does stuff with lighting to make light more efficient, and it makes worlds generate faster too. I don't really understand how these mods actually work, by the way, this stuff's kind of like magic to me, so you can go read about it if you really want to know more. So those are the standout performance mods, but I've still got a bunch more to go through. Immediately Fast is another mod that should make just about everything in the game faster. Some improvements that it makes are up to six times better than vanilla, which is just crazy. Next up, the Entity Calling mod, which stops the rendering of entities when you can't see them. Normally in vanilla, this creeper behind this wall is still being rendered by the game, even though the player can't see it. This mod stops it from being rendered until the player can see it again to improve FPS. It's still there, it's just not being shown until you can see it. Lazy DFU to disables part of a feature in the game to make the game load a lot faster. The feature I'm talking about is upgrading worlds, but wait, it's not bad. This mod is not bad. Basically, this feature, which is known as Data Fixer Upper, is usually loaded when the game starts. So if you don't ever upgrade a world, the Data Fixer Upper won't start, which saves time. I would also recommend throwing in the Smooth Boot mod to reduce CPU usage when the game starts too. The Ferrite Core mod reduces your game's memory usage, allowing for other programs to run better on your computer while the game is running, and really, there's no reason not to use it. There's also the Enhanced Block Energy mod, which changes a lot of blocks like beds, signs, and more to use block models instead of block entity models. You can't actually notice any visual difference in game with and without the mod, and that's the best part. By changing these blocks from block entities, which are laggy, stupid, and kinda suck, it makes them into just block models, which are not laggy, not stupid, and don't kinda suck. It's free FPS. Memory Leak Fix is another great mod because it does exactly what it says. It fixes a bunch of existing memory leaks in Minecraft. If you don't know what a memory leak is, basically it's when a program starts using a certain amount of memory, but when it's done, it doesn't stop using it and it just stays unusable until you restart the program. Basically, it wastes memory. I'd also recommend using the dynamic FPS mod. You probably don't need to be getting hundreds of FPS when you're not even focusing on the game, so this mod brings down your game's frame rate when it doesn't need to be at its maximum to save power. So if you're tabbed out of the game, it doesn't use all of your computer's power. While saving electricity might not be your top priority while you're playing video games, this also allows for the other apps on your computer to run better while Minecraft is just sitting in the background. It also offers the option to mute sounds when you're tabbed out as well, so if you want to completely 
completely ignore the game until you focus back on to it, you can do that too. The blanket mod may not necessarily boost your frame rate, but what it does do is fix a bunch of old bugs in Minecraft. Now don't worry, these fixes don't change the game's behavior by default, they're mostly just fixing visual bugs and lag problems. There are some features that change vanilla behavior a little, but they're off by default and you don't need to use them. It's a great mod to have installed regardless. And finally, there's Krypton, which has small fixes in the game to reduce memory and CPU usage and some more cool stuff that my little brain can't understand. Okay, so those are all the mods that I use to improve my game's performance. But now it's time for the even better part, the quality of life mods. And before I start talking about these mods, add the Indium mod to your mods folder. Indium basically makes the Sodium mod compatible with a bunch of other mods that it wouldn't normally work with, and you should always be using it to make sure your game doesn't just crash. Alright, with that out of the way, I'll start with the Iris mod, which brings one of Optifine's headlining features back, shaders. Iris has been in development for more than a couple of years now, and it supports basically every shader pack with maximum performance from the Sodium mod. Combining Sodium and Iris gives you the best possible shader performance, so these two mods work together perfectly. On the topic of bringing back Optifine features, the Logical Zoom mod brings back the zoom feature we all love too. This mod gives you the baseline Optifine zoom that we're all used to, but if you're looking for a little bit more customization, you can check out the OK Zoomer mod instead. This mod gives you a ton of options to control the zoom speed, animation, and so much more. Now, I just use Logical Zoom since I don't need all the extra customization, but you can use whatever you choose. The Capes mod allows you to use Optifine Capes without actually having to use Optifine. The Cape feature is a big reason that a lot of people prefer Optifine, but you don't need to lose your $10 donation with this mod installed. You can even use Capes from other mods. And finally, for the Optifine replacements, the Continuity mod adds support for connected textures to the game. If you've never seen connected textures before, this is what you've been missing out on. Also, if you can find resource packs that support the Optifine connected texture format, you can add your own connected textures to the game, too. Mod menu adds a much-needed feature that Quilt and Fabric don't provide by default. In your pause menu and the main menu, this mod adds a button to view a list of every mod you have installed. It also allows you to configure the mods you have installed, which is probably the most important part of it. I recommend changing these two settings in the configuration for mod menu. Change the mods button to be next to the Minecraft Realms button and prevent extra libraries from counting towards your total mod count. 3D skin layers makes the second layer of skins render in 3D. It kind of just looks better and I don't really know why Mojang hasn't added this themselves. In-game account switcher allows you to change to a different Minecraft account without restarting the game. This mod is useless if you don't actually have another Minecraft account, but this will save you a lot of time if you do have multiple accounts. One of my favorite mods is the 51418 mod. The name doesn't really tell you anything about what it does, but it's actually a a reference to a Mojang bug report with that ID. This bug was fixed in Minecraft 1.19, and basically what the bug allowed you to do was change your game settings outside of the normally allowed limits using the options.txt file. For example, you could set your render distance to 33 instead of 32. The main thing that I used this bug for was to change the in-game brightness so it was five times higher than the normal maximum. Not only did it make the game a lot more playable, but it also made watching on YouTube a lot better. Since the ability to change these settings was removed, this mod was made in order to prevent the game from changing the values back, so you can change them again. It's a lifesaver for me since I use my monitor on a low brightness and I make YouTube videos. Speaking of lifesavers, the Sodium mod that I mentioned before is also a lifesaver, but it's far from perfect. Using other mods, you can fix some problems with Sodium that the main mod itself doesn't already address. The Reese's Sodium Options mod reorganizes Sodium's custom video settings menu to make it cover the full screen. It keeps all of the same buttons and general layout, but it's bigger and scales better with your GUI scale setting. You should also add the Sodium Biome Blending Fix mod and the Sodium Occlusion culling fix mod. The first mod fixes an issue that Sodium introduces, which can cause biome blending to apply to any block, and it looks like this. This mod fixes that so it will never happen to you. The occlusion fix prevents this bug from happening, where certain chunks will randomly become invisible from some angles. Mojang actually fixed this bug themselves a while ago, but Sodium unintentionally brings it back, so this mod fixes it again. I've spoken more in depth about this mod before in my Minecraft chat reporting video, but the no chat reports mod is another favorite of mine. This mod basically just prevents your chat messages from being reportable on servers. It also also turns off the game's data collection feature that was secretly added back in 1.18. I go into detail about chat reporting and data collection and a whole lot more in my chat reporting video, but long story short, just use the no chat reports mod. If you just want to disable data collection and keep chat reporting, you can use the no telemetry mod instead, but just remember that you don't need this mod if you're using no chat reports. Switching languages in Minecraft is annoyingly slow, so while I patiently wait for the pirate speak language to load, I'll tell you about the language reload mod. Switching languages is now instantaneous with this mod, and the language switching GUI also looks so much 
much better than vanilla. Even if you basically never use this menu, there's no reason not to have it installed anyway, just in case. You ever seen one of those cool cinematics in your favorite YouTuber's videos? Well, they probably use Replay Mod to make it. This mod allows you to basically go into spectator mode after you leave a world. If you have the mod running and recording in the background, after leaving a world, a replay file will be saved, which you can then enter and then look back on your gameplay. I'm not gonna explain the rest of the mod because there's just too much to go through, but you'll definitely find a use for it at some point. Mini HUD is the mod that I've been using for a long time to show my coordinates at the top of the screen. This mod can do so much though, way too much to cover in this video. It's got so many options and it's really powerful. I'll link a great video that covers all of its vast functionality in the card above and in the description, but if you only want to use the coordinates, I'll leave a link in the description to my configuration file for the mod. Just open up that memorable folder you made before and put the file into the config folder. If you don't use my config file, open up a world and press H and C on your keyboard to open the options panel. If you do use my config, hold left shift first and then press H and C to open the panel. And from there, have fun. In my last mod video, I mentioned the not enough crashes mod, which would prevent your game from fully crashing and instead take you back to the main menu. Well, this mod has since become incompatible with the iris mod due to some issues that it causes. So your next best bet is the mix in trace mod. It doesn't prevent your game from crashing, but it does put more information into your crash reports. So if someone ever needs to see one of your crash reports to help you with a problem, this could give them some more useful information. The better ping display mod fixes Minecraft's biggest problem, which is these useless ping bars in the tab screen that no one knows what to do with. Like what number is this? What does it mean? Boom, this mod puts numbers there. Easy, makes sense, moving on. This horizon kind of stinks, but by adding the clear skies mod, it looks better. Now it doesn't suck. The screenshot to clipboard mod copies screenshots that you take to your computer's clipboard so you can send it to other people quickly. You've been able to open the screenshot file through the vanilla game for a long time now, but you have to dig through File Explorer to find the actual file to send to people. This mod should hopefully get rid of that need most of the time. You've probably heard a world edit before. It allows you to modify massive areas of terrain easily with this little wooden axe. It's nice to have running even if you don't need it often because it won't work if cheats are off and you won't remember it until you need it. The more chat history mod changes the maximum amount of messages you can see in your chat history at once from a measly 100 to a massive 16,384. You probably won't lose any of your chat history until you leave the world or server. I used to use a mod called Don't Clear Chat History to address this problem too, but it removed the ability to clear your chat history manually, so I stopped using it. I'll link in the description if you still want to use it, but it won't be linked in the full mods document. The Better Statistics screen mod changes the default game statistics screen to this. Yeah, full on facelift and heart surgery, and it looks so much better than the default one. Also, to make sure that all of these mods work, you're going to need to install these four mods too. And finally, the Technoblade Pig mod, which gives a crown to all pigs named Technoblade. A great mod to end off this video. Hopefully everything works for you. If you have any questions, leave a comment and I'll probably get back to you. Goodbye for another two and a half months or so.